My name is Tal, a sales application engineer at Munters. Today we'll be talking about grounding protection. This video will be divided to four sections. The first one will be, why do we need a good ground protection? Then we will go over what is proper grounding. After that, we'll talk a bit more about measuring and ground connectivity. And last, we will show examples from the controller. So let's get started. Why do I need a good ground protection? Well, first and foremost is safety. Electrical equipment can be destroyed or slowly damaged by voltage spikes and lightning hits. Proper electrical grounding in combination with the controller's internal protections is essential to protect the system and make sure it lasts as long as it should. The other reason, which is no less important, is noise protection. Electronic equipment, such as the controller and sensors, work with very low voltage signals. Proper ground protection will keep these signals clean and all the access electricity will flow to the ground. Let's move on. What is proper grounding? First of all, the ground rods. The ground rods are used to efficiently connect the system to the earth where current dissipates in the soil. Then the ground wire. The ground wire is a large copper wire that connects the main circuit breaker panel to the ground rod. Then we have the ground clamps. Ground clamps are used to attach the ground wire to the ground rod. It is not enough to wrap the wire around the rod. You have to use the clamp. Make sure that the rod, wire, and clamps are installed properly and meet the industry standards. After we connect everything, we need to measure the ground connectivity. Ground connectivity must be measured at the controller's ground wire. This is very important. Special ground testers are highly recommended. These testers enable measuring ground resistance without breaking the circuit. Remember, standard voltmeters do not show ground absence or high ground resistance. Lastly, do not rely on visual inspection. The ground rod's resistance must not exceed 5 ohm. Measure the resistance before the controller, as you can see in this video. One last important point. The power ground source from the electrical enclosure must be directly wired to the controller ground bar. If you have several controllers in the room, each one should be connected directly in a star layout and not daisy chained to one another. Now that we got that covered, let's see some examples from the controller. The controller must be grounded through the dedicated ground terminal. Sensors, bird scales, and silo scales, and other cable shields must be grounded at the controller. Failure to do so will impact the devices. For example, temperature can fluctuate when power spikes or when other devices such as fans start operating. Bird scales and silo scales can also show unbalanced values. A very easy way to see the scale stability is to go to scales and then test menu and make sure that the numbers show stable figures and not jump around. The communication cable shield must be connected only at one end of every cable. This is very important for the communication stability. Unprotected communication will change the voltage value on the cable resulting in disconnections. Finally, the silo. The silo's metal body should be grounded locally. Don't forget, some external devices, such as solar panel inverters or frequency drivers that are used for variable speed fans, might inject noise to the power line. Country regulations mandate filtering systems for such equipment, so be sure to insist on such filters. The filter specifications is provided by the equipment manufacturers. For more information, please visit our website and search for How do I ensure proper grounding? Some areas do not have a stable power grid. Other places may have more lightning storms. For areas like these, we provide some devices that reduce the risk of damage and provide a stable power source. There are three types of lightning protection and stability devices. The first one is RPLP1, power line protection. This device is designed to be installed in front of the controller in order to protect the controller in case of lightning strike. Then we have the RIT50, which is also a lightning protector, but its main objective is to isolate the controller from electrical spikes and is highly recommended for areas 
that do not have a stable electrical infrastructure. Last but not least is the RCLP1, Communication Line Protection. This device is connected in front of the controller and protects the controller from lightning hits that may insert through the communication cable. Having these small protection devices can save a lot of money in case of lightning strike. For more information and detailed diagrams, please visit our website and search for available lightning protection and stability options.